job is to kind of follow on um, from what Rosie has demonstrated so brilliantly um, and to kind of show you a little bit of, well, how did they do that? Um, so, so that's kind of where we're, we're going for the next kind of um, little bit before lunchtime. Um, so my name is Dave. I am part of the schools team um, at SVU UK. So I'm kind of the, the other 50% of our schools, um, schools team. Um, and we played a little bit of a hand in kind of helping um, the archives kind of create those resources. We sort of gave a little bit of a push start, um, but very much um, kind of what you've seen is the work of Rosie and her team. So um, I'm not here to take any credit, but kind of more just to walk you through um, some of the kind of technicalities of, of actually how did they make that? How did that, how does that come to be? Um, so before we get into that, I want to um, just kind of talk for a moment about this idea of democratising data. Um, and what do we mean when we say that we're going to democratise our data? Um, do we mean that the way we do that is we kind of stick it somewhere and say, OK, it's open, come and get it. Um, come and help yourself um, and use that data. Do whatever you want with it. Um, all of the data, all of those archives, all of those letters, all those records, everything that Rosie just shared was already open. It's part of a public collection in the National Archives. Um, anyone um, can do what we did um, and kind of get a trolley brought up um, full of boxes and um, open out those incredible old books and, and see that handwriting um, pour over them on a really lovely sunny day in your shorts um, and find the poor law union uh, that you probably would have been sent to um, if you were alive in Victorian times. Um, so anyone can do that. It's all public, it's all open, um, it's all there. But if you don't live near to the archives or you've got a coachload of primary school pupils who you want to get there, um, they're welcome. Um, the archives run, run sessions, um, but it might be logistically tricky. Um, not everyone can access those resources. Um, so rather than just saying, okay, it's there, go and use it, um, maybe we need to do a little bit more. Um, exactly the same applies if your data is not paper archives. Um, probably doesn't need to get put on a trolley and, and kind of taken up a special lift, um, but it does need to be in a format that people can access and use. Um, so if you joined us last year, um, we kind of talked over sort of similar issues um, on this floor um, and down on the main stage. The Met Office um, talked about kind of some of the challenges of sharing um, their, their long-term kind of climate data and their climate projections. Um, and we've done some work on, on kind of making that a little bit more open. Um, and the Met Office have done some amazing work um, on making that um, more open by the Living Atlas. Um, so you can get to those data sets, you can use them um, in your work. So the, the alternative to that, that I think um, is probably more, um, more the way that we should go, um, is rather than just saying, okay, there it is, is we kind of need to be a little bit more like a restaurant um, with our data. Um, we need to take all of those raw ingredients from that data set, and we need to kind of cook them up into different options. Um, so we have a menu. Um, of offerings that work for different people depending on what it is they're interested in. Um, and people can kind of pick and choose from that menu uh, based on whatever it is they fancy. Um, and that's kind of exactly what Rosie's shown us um, through the voice of the Victorian poor. She's taken all of that data, um, a super rich collection, um, and created an offering that suits all palates. So how's she done it? Um, this is where we take our little look um, under the bonnet, so to speak, um, of the Victorian Poor um, kind of website. Um, so as Rosie said, um, at its heart, um, this is a hub site. Um, so hub is kind of providing the wrapper um, for all of this content. Um, Rosie could have built the whole thing coding it from scratch. So she could have started with um, just a blank, I don't know, my internet thing, um, I don't really know, kind of on the fringe of my ability here, um, started coding from scratch, coded it, um, or kind of gone, okay, I'm going to take Experience Builder um, and kind of build the whole thing from a blank canvas um, in Experience Builder. But she hasn't. Um, what she's done is kind of use um, different building blocks of Esri technology um, and kind of chunk them all together um, to, to kind of fit 
the skills that, that she had, the, the kind of time, the capacity um, that she had, um, and what it was that she was trying to create, so what she wanted to put on that menu um, of offerings. Um, so we're going to take a little leap, kind of look at it, what, what was each bit built from. Um, and I know that there were probably people in this room um, who were a little bit like me, um, whenever they go to a website with a map on, kind of go, oh, so is that an Esri map? And what they used to build that particular Esri map on that website? Um, so there's probably people who are kind of sitting there going, okay, I think I've seen um, that, I think I've seen that, I think I've seen that, I think I've seen that. Um, because, because that's what some of us are like. Um, so um, the first thing we've seen in, on our kind of spotter's guide of, um, of ArcGIS technology um, is a hub. Um, a hub provided the wrapper, um, it also provided the place that Rosie could link out to um, existing content um, on the rest of the, the National Archive website. So it's not all kind of brand new um, content, some of it's, it's stuff that already exists, it's already out there. Um, if we take a little look at those primary school um, resources that, um, that we kind of worked through there, where that faces of that, that John Hankerson story. Um, so I think there's a really neat and kind of probably um, a very logical progression in the complexity um, of this, both in terms of the complexity of the build and the complexity of the audience. Um, so the simplest um, kind of user case um, the simplest application um, is also the simplest one to build. Um, so this primary um, app, um, some folks might recognise as being, it's an instant app, and it's the nearby instant app. Um, so, kind of five minutes work. Once that data's out of that enormous great spreadsheet, onto a map, located, um, literally in, in less than five minutes, uh, we could turn that map into something that looks a little bit like this. Um, with a bit more work, with kind of maybe half an hour, um, we can take that into our brand colours. Um, we can kind of make it fit with the rest of our colour scheme. Um, we can customise some of that functionality so that we've got that ruler, those measure tools, so we can do that. Um, our kind of um, our journey to, to, to the workhouse with John Hankerson, um, and kind of go from there. Um, so, as Rosie said, the kind of focus with those primary resources um, near me. Where am I? Um, which letters have come from near me? And kind of how can I relate and engage um, to those letters from my local area? As we move into the secondary resources, we kind of get a little bit more complex in the build. Um, students are starting to do perhaps more complicated things here as well. So we're starting to kind of maybe explore um, some of those topics and themes that are emerging from the letters rather than just, um, well, where are these people living um, who are sending and receiving letters? Um, so students might be wanting to find um, letters that relate to those themes kind of nationally or locally um, or even do kind of like regional comparisons. Um, is the experience of pe the poor in the north different to the poor in the south? Um, so we can kind of look at those themes and look geographically. Um, and the other thing that, that these kind of start to do with these resources is we're laying some little breadcrumbs sort of suggestions of how students might want to um, interpret this data. Um, so most of what's in, in those letters is entirely qualitative data. Um, it's all descriptive, it's all kind of very wordy. Um, but actually, if we start to take that as a mass, we can pull some numbers out of it, particularly when we kind of code it up as, um, as themes. Um, and this is kind of starting to lay that breadcrumb of, of ideas and suggestions of what might our students want to do with that data themselves when they've got a bit more of a kind of free hand um, to explore a little bit further. Um, so if you're kind of playing your um, ArcGIS technology bingo, um, we've got a dashboard. In fact, we've got several dashboards. Um, and Rose has done something really clever and really neat with those dashboards. Um, because there's five of them. There seem to be, what, seven, eight? Seven? When you build them. Um, so there seem to be more. Um, those dashboards could all be on seven different pages, um, or they could be stacked one on the top of another um, on a big, long, scrolly page. Um, but actually, what we're starting to think about here is, OK, how are people going to um, encounter and use these dashboards? Um, and if it's young people, the chances are they're on quite a small screen, something like a tablet or a phone. Um, and if we start to stack them up, 
got a big old job of scrolling. I've also kind of perhaps subconsciously given some hierarchy to those different topics, those different themes. Uh, if medicine's at the top, some people might not get any further than medicine and not discover that, that the childhood theme is, is there. They've just never managed to, to discover it. Um, so without kind of introducing that unconscious level of um, kind of a priority or, or, or kind of filtering of experience, all of our options are there. Dig into them, explore. It's kind of intuitive and you can sort of go with it. Um, so what Rose has used here is, is a little bit of experience builder to pull together um, five different dashboards. And again, dashboards in Experience Builder in Hub. It's starting to look like a sort of nest of, of Russian dolls here, isn't it? We're kind of nesting together um, our different pieces of technology. Uh, we've done something similar. Um, so with those um, climate resources that we talked about um, last year, um, some of those climate dashboards uh, are kind of grouped into little collections. Um, so rather than having um, again, a page for, um, for rainfall, for temperature, for snow, daily kind of observations. Um, again, three dashboards, this time an instant app, again, the portfolio instant app. I clearly didn't want as much work as Rosie really did. I was feeling less brave. And I didn't want to take on experience builder that day. Um, but again, slide inside um, a hub. Um, and then we get to the most complex um, of those apps. And really, um, the total kind of free form um, ask any question, research anything you want, um, find out whatever you like, um, app, that research app. So for our, um, our older students, maybe our kind of A-level historians, um, or even some of those undergraduate students who are starting to explore um, kind of topics and themes that they're interested in, in the area they're interested in, in the time periods they're interested in, um, all of that functionality, well, that needs experience building. And a, and a pretty kind of complicated and impressive experience builder with that. It's kind of um, probably one of the, the kind of most impressive ones I've, um, I've seen for a long time. Um, so over to experience builder. But I think the kind of key there is that Rosie didn't start with this one. You don't start with experience building, you start somewhere else. Um, again, there's a, a kind of another um, sort of example of just of that um, sort, of, sort of same approach of um, experience builder um, filling the gaps of some of the, the functionality that maybe Hub can't provide for us. Um, this is our careers with um, site. Each one of these little cards um, is a GIS professional telling the story of their career and the job that they do and how they got there. Um, and you explore that via a whole set of filters. Um, so kind of, who are you? What are your interests in? What industry do you want to work in? Um, so again, another example of experience builder slotted inside Hub, but this time, to make it really easy for us to add new people into this. Every time we get a new story, um, and if you go downstairs in a break, um, you can talk to Benny um, at the back. He'll take your photo in a big photo frame, um, and he will try and grab um, your story of your career, um, because maybe you're an interesting person um, to be profiled on this page as well. Uh, Luke is, um, you can hear from Luke later. Um, so we wanted it to be really easy to get data into this as well. Um, so at the start of that little process, there's also a survey one, two, three that kind of feeds all of this um, as well. Um, I want to take you, um, I'm going to completely butcher something that Rosie said to me um, a, a, kind of, a few weeks ago as we were sort of um, talking about this. Um, obviously across those apps, there's increasing complexity. Um, Increasing complexity for the user, increasing complexity for the builder. Um, so what Rosie sort of said, um, or the kind of general gist of it was, um, I use the instant apps and dashboards as my training ground. So you start building your apps with those. When I found things that I wanted to do, but kind of couldn't work out how to do, um, even with those like kind of moving out of express settings um, in the instant apps and going into kind of full detailed settings, um, I use Experience Builder to bridge those gaps, uh, bundling together multiple dashboards into one um, kind of single page with the toggles at the top. Um, and then I felt confident to build even more complex apps with Experience Builder. Um, so think of that progression, both in terms of um, the content you're trying to create for your users um, and your own journey and confidence and skills um, in creating those, um, those apps. And also remember, that 
your simplest app needn't necessarily only be for your simplest user. That first primary kind of focused app, um, how many of us looked at that and thought, I wonder who sent letters near where I lived? You know? That's your engagement tool. That's the way that you get anybody interested in this. So it's not just for um, those lowest kind of lowest level users. It's kind of your, your introduction. Um, it's the thing you share on social media. You throw it out there so that anyone can look at the, the maps that you've, you've made and the data sets you've got and engage them to take those next steps a little bit further. Um, so as we get towards lunch, we've heard a lot about pizza. Um, I'm going to give you some takeaway. Sadly, it's not Domino's, I'm sorry. Um, number one, think about your audience. Who are they? Um, what do they need? Am I going to give them what they need or what I think they need or just everything and help hope that they extract the things they need from that? Um, what can they actually use? Um, and are you going to give them something too complex? Um, can you segment that audience and create multiple things for multiple people? Um, so it might just be because I'm lazy, um, but or a pragmatist, perhaps is the other way of looking at it. Um, use the simplest tool possible to build the solution you want to build. Why make your life more complicated? Um, and lastly, kind of mix it up and mash it up. Um, don't be worried about kind of using different tools in combination, um, rather than try and create your solution just using one tool. Um, so you kind of mix it all up together um, and create the thing that you want. Um, and that is it from me. Thanks, long enough that we don't have time for questions and everyone's going to go and eat lunch now. Uh, there's always time for questions. <laughs> Does anybody have anything they want to ask Dave sort of more specifically around that kind of building aspect before you do uh, rush and grab some lunch? Fabulous. <laughs> everyone just wants to learn. <laughs> if anything does occur to you, please do feel free to come and grab any one of us and ask us for a little bit more detail. Otherwise, thank you very so much for your attention. Have a great rest of the day. Hopefully see you later in the next session here in education. Bye for now, guys.